Just at Hawaii, of course. Oh, yeah. Well, there, get, there's a good chance you're going to get a lei, which get, is the necklace what? that's made up of the flowers, the lei that they put over yes. the, your head. When you get off the plane. And they, they, yes, exactly. They don't come from the lei tree, of course, as we mentioned. They come from the plumeria that's tree. That's right. And one local man was so taken by these trees when he first saw them in Hawaii that he decided to bring them to Tampa. And boy, did he bring them. The exotic plumeria nursery now boasts a huge collection. For Alan Bunch, plumeria trees are a labor of love. Also known as frangipani, these trees are famous for their blooms. Tell me about when this obsession with plumeria began for you. Well, it actually, it happened in 1989, my first trip to Hawaii. I saw these trees with these beautiful flowers, and I went up there and kind of looked at that unusual, and then I smelled one, and it was over. I, I just I had no idea what it was, never seen it before, but it, that was a life-changing moment for me. Alan left his job in accounting to start the exotic plumeria nursery. He travels to Hawaii every year to add to his inventory. And over the years, I have purchased trees right out of people's yards. And then I go back each year or every other year and take cuttings off of my tree, and yet they still have a tree in their yard. Nice. So win-win for everyone. Yeah, yeah. I go every uh, January or February, and I typically ship back between four and 10,000 cuttings each year. He loves Hawaii so much, Alan turned his yard into the perfect spot for a luau, complete with bamboo, a waterfall, and koi. I fell in love with Hawaii in 16 from the Blue Hawaii movie. Oh, I see. And then that gave me this desire to go to Hawaii. So the real reason for me going to Hawaii was to meet these guys. Interesting. And that's what happened. This is called Celadine, and uh, it has a very waxy, citrusy scent, very, very pleasant. But the petals are very thick, so it holds up well after it's picked and doesn't turn brown right away, so it's ideal for making the lays. If you can't find the type of tree you want here, then you've got a long trip ahead of you because this is the largest collection on the continent. With rows upon rows of plumerias, picking a plant can be overwhelming. We don't show everything because even what we're showing is already so, you know, it's overwhelming for people. So, you know, we just say, we'll show them maybe two or three or four pinks and four or five yellows, but not all of them. When you get the real collectors, people who have really had the bug for a long time and they want to have one of each mm -hmm. or they want to have one of every kind of thing, then uh, we'll show those people. I can see why people would have a hard time making a decision here. This board has 70 different varieties on it and this place has over 200 varieties. How will I ever make a decision? Actually, how about I take them all? Actually, that would be out of my budget. The larger trees are not cheap, and the rarer they are, the pricier they are. Here in Florida, plumeria only bloom for a few months in the summer, but Alan has one that just won't quit. This tree has been blooming like this since the third day of April, and for a tree this size, that's insane. I have no idea why, but I'm loving it every minute. This is called embers. I discovered this back in the early 2000s, and the reason I named it Embers is, I think, pretty obvious. Yes. It's a little more expensive than the others because there's a very limited supply. Mm -hmm. I only own one tree in Maui, and I go back and cut it each year or every other year. One of the best things about Plumeria is they're easy to care for, and Alan says they like being neglected. I will guarantee you they will give you more back than they expect from you all the time. Alan, what makes this Plumeria so special? Well, a number of things. Number one is the fragrance. Mm. And it, it, this particular variety, which is called Singapore, throws its fragrance farther from the tree than any other plumeria. You smell it. Oh. It's the most haunting fragrance that you can imagine. It's amazing. P people over the years ask me, what's your favorite plumeria? And I never could tell them. And then I had a dream about three years ago, and I went down the list of all the pluses and minuses, and this <laughs> had no minuses. How have you been able to keep this business going and growing over the years when a lot of others have come and gone? I love it. It's a passion. It's not a business. Mm. Sorry. No, it's okay. But it, it gives me so much reward when I smell it because quite often we'll get customers who's coming here, maybe grew up somewhere where they grew as a child and they can remember climbing on these mm -hmm. and they come in and start crying because they've not seen one in so long. Mm -hmm. So 
it's a thing about people and sharing something of nature and sharing the beauty and the fragrances. It beats the heck out of a county. <laughs> Oh, so great that he job. has found his passion, yeah. and it's obvious. That's so sweet. The place is magical. Again, I bet it smells incredible. It, it smells <laughs> great. Again, it's called the, the Exotic Plumeria, and Rob tells me that bees will probably still go to those because they go for the pollen, not the nectar. There you go. Right? You've been schooled. I have been schooled. <laughs> we'll be right back with more daytime after this.